is here and sharing her talents with us. Uh, we also, just so you, oh, Ernie is telling me my mic is not on. Better? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So uh, we are very glad to have Julia with us today uh, playing the organ. We are also um, asking that you please keep the Hale family in your prayers. Uh, David passed away uh, at this past week, and once we have more information about services, we will get that out to you. Um, please also continue to keep the Fox family in your prayers. We will uh, be having communion next Sunday, so please uh, arrange to have elements there at, the, at your house with you so uh, you may partake as you watch uh, and join in on the service. And remember, as always, if you have any questions, please call the office. Uh, and Amy has reminded me once more, please check your junk mail folder to see if the new sheet is going there instead of to your inbox. With that being said, let us worship the Lord. Good morning. Please join me in prayer. Father God, we gather together from many different places to worship you today. There are a few of us here. Some are at home. Some may be outside. Some may be watching on a computer or listening by phone. Yet you are with every one of us. Father, we know that you are a good and gracious God, and we trust in you. We know that you're faithful to us. We follow you, and we know that you are with us. We know that you love us, and we thank you for that everlasting love. Comfort and console those who are grieving. Grant your peace to those who are anxious. Fill each of us with the joy of your presence. Be with us everywhere today that we worship you. Amen. We've come to worship God, who loved us before we were yet born, who knows us even better than we know ourselves, whose presence never leaves us, and whose love for us never ceases. 
This is our God. Let's worship together. Let's sing, Come Thou Almighty King. God's love never fails us. Even when we stray from his teachings, ignore opportunities to share his word, or prioritize other things before him, God is still there for us. He is waiting patiently for us to reach out to him, and he will be there to comfort us, to love us, and to forgive us. I will read our corporate prayer of confession aloud, and when I finish, we'll have a few minutes for silent reflection. Holy Lord, God of life, hear our prayer. Forgive us when we follow paths that do not lead to life as you intend. Paths that lead instead to violence or hate or fear. Paths that lead to division and death. Forgive us when we forget that you offer us life that is abundant and eternal a life surrounded by your spirit, life that began at the creation of all things. Look deep into our hearts, O God. Search out our hidden thoughts and motives. Keep us from actions that will bring harm to ourselves or to others, and guide us in the ways that lead to life. Hear these words from Christ. My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So go forth in the power of the Almighty, who forgives you and loves you. Amen.
got to make sure my mic's on. So, here we go. <laughs> so this is a weird time, as you all know. Some of you all are getting ready for school. Others of you have uh, been going to your child care and might have noticed a bit of a difference. The one major thing that we all seem to notice is that many of us are wearing masks. And the one thing that uh, happens when you go out and wear a mask is that a lot of times you don't know who else is around you. You, you don't recognize maybe uh, that person whom you've known for forever or, or your teacher sometimes. It, it kind of provides like a, a hiding place. But here's the thing. God always knows who's behind your mask. God still knows that you are his beloved child. And this thing, though other people may not know who you are, doesn't keep God from knowing who you are. In the psalm today, we're going to read about how there's no place you can go where God can't be. And the, the psalm writer says that you could go all the way up into heaven and God is there, or you could go all the way into the belly of the earth and God is there, and there's nowhere that you can be where God isn't. So even if you're behind a mask, or if you're scared, or if something else is going on, God is still there, and God knows you, because God made you. So as we go through this weird time right now, just remember, nothing about this time can keep God away from you, and God loves you and holds you through it. Let's go to God in prayer. Glorious God. Thank you for knowing us and loving us and being with us. Amen. Okay, let's get at it. Yeah. 
Let us go to God in prayer. Glorious God, we give you thanks for this day and for this ability to join with you in worship that we can gather from all sorts of places and still be together. We pray, God, that you be with us in this reading of your scripture and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Psalm 139. Listen to these words. Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up and even from far away, you comprehend my plans. You study my traveling and my resting. You are thoroughly familiar with all my ways. There isn't a word on my tongue, Lord, that you don't already know completely. You surround me front and back. You put your hand on me. That kind of knowledge is too much for me. It's so high above me that I cannot fathom it. Where could I go to get away from your spirit? Where could I go to escape your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I went down to the grave, you would be there too. If I could fly on the wings of dawn, stopping to rest only on the far side of the ocean, even there your hand would guide me. Even there your strong hand would hold me tight. If I said the darkness will definitely hide me, the light will become night around me, even the darkness isn't too dark for you. Nighttime would shine bright as day because darkness is the same as light to you. You are the one who created my innermost parts. You knit me together while I was still in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you that I was marvelously set apart. Your works are wonderful. I know that very well. My bones weren't hidden from you when I was being put together in a secret place. When I was being woven together in the deep parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my embryo, and on your scroll every day was written what was being formed for me before any one of them had yet happened. God, your plans are incomprehensible to me. Their total number is countless. 
If I tried to count them, they outnumber grains of sand. If I came to the very end, I would still be with you. If only, God, you would kill the wicked. If only murderers would get away from me. The people who talk about you, but only for wicked schemes. The people who are are your enemies, who use your name as if it were of no significance. Don't I hate everyone who hates you? Don't I despise those who attack you? Yes, I hate them through and through. They have become my enemies too. Examine me, God. Look at my heart, put me to the test, know my anxious thoughts, look to see if there is any idolatrous way in me, then lead me on the eternal path. This is the word of the Lord. I have had a uh, troubled relationship with Psalm 139. For a very long time, as a young person, it was my favorite psalm, but it was my favorite psalm because every time I heard it, it was the lectionary reading which cuts out that part that is so atonal to the rest of it, that I hate everyone part. And so when I rediscovered the psalm by, you know, actually opening up my Bible and reading it, I was troubled by Psalm 139. Because here is this beautiful uh, acknowledgement of how God knows us all so well. Of how God has, has intimately formed us, even though this great and amazing God of the universe, who we will never be able to fathom, understands us so well and then there is this this outburst of of anger and self-righteousness right there in the middle and then at the end the idea of the examination so for a while I left Psalm 139 behind because I didn't want to wrestle with that part and to be honest A part of Psalm 139 is terrifying because here is this idea that there is nothing I can hide from God. And there's a whole lot I would like to hide from God. There's a lot I would like to hide from myself, about myself. I know my thoughts. It's a little terrifying this well. And so I I set Psalm 139 aside for a long time until I eventually came back to it because that last few sentences started to speak to me again. As many of you know, uh, I have... um, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder that manifests itself through my thoughts, um, and I and so this suddenly finding this psalm to to uh, say God know my anxious thoughts and calm them became a mantra, and the idea that still. God knowing in the midst of these thoughts that pop into my head, in the midst of these things, that there is no thing in those that would still separate me from God was a lifeline. And a reminder to me that even when I felt like I had gone down into the darkest places, that God could still find me there. It was a reminder to me that I am not alone. And that knowledge that I am not alone has allowed me to realize that there are others who do feel alone. And so it has helped me to see that in them, this psalm, which I have always taken as so personal just to me, applies to them as well. 
So how could I go down the street, I who have struggled with with so many things in my life, struggled through so many uh, imperfections in my own uh, my own life and actions, how could I look at them and not see a person who Psalm 139 was written intimately for too? Because Psalm 139 has become a psalm that speaks to my faith, warts and all. And even though, like the lectionary, I would like to cut out that part that makes me really uncomfortable, I can't. I know it's there now. And any reading of this psalm that takes apart that side, that part that wants me to lash out at other people, it just rings hollow. Because David or whoever wrote this psalm to a God that knew them intimately, and it still rings true to me. And I know my faith is not perfect, and I know when I go to God in prayer, I want to leave out so much. When we get to that time of confession, I don't want to say to God those things that I know We're just, I just don't want to think about them anymore. But Psalm 139, as so many other places in the Bible, remind us that there's no skipping parts with God. God knows us intimately and loves us anyway. Loves us so much that God won't let us flee. That God won't let us stay in the darkness alone. That God won't let us be alone even in the grave. If we could just see that in our own lives and in the lives of others. It's a reminder to us of what Jesus saw in all of us in reminding us to love others and ourselves. It's a reminder to us of what the Spirit whispers to us as we are bound together as God's family. It's a reminder to all of us that Psalm 139 was written just for me and for you. And for everyone. That this intimate love letter from the psalmist to God talks about God's working in every single one of our lives. And God's longing for us to give all of our life to God. Even the parts that frighten us or disgust us or that we just don't even want to think about. So family, you're never alone. God is with you. And so are we. Amen. Let us now state our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Family, let us now go to God in prayer. Lord, you know what we're going to say before we say it. As the thought is formed in our mind that you made, you hear it. And so it might seem silly for us to use words to speak to you when we could just do it all inside of our heads, but sometimes the mere act of pushing air through our vocal cords and moving our lips makes that prayer real not to you but to us. And so, God, we come before you in this time speaking words, pleas for help. Help for those who are struggling to breathe. Whether through sickness or injustice. Words of help for those whose anxious thoughts cannot be calmed. Because they're worried about what tomorrow will bring. Wondering what the best choices to make in this time are. Worried about their children or their parents. Worried about themselves. We ask for help for those who are working so hard to care for us. For teachers preparing for whatever this new school year will bring for doctors and nurses and therapists and others who are trying to heal bodies racked by not just this virus that surrounds us, but all the other ailments of life. Praying for business owners and workers as they continue to try and navigate what is going on. Praying for help for our leaders who are trying to to see what we as a city, county, state, country, world should be doing. Prayers for religious leaders who are trying to figure out what is best for their communities while also worried on in their own lives. And we pray, God, as we search for answers that we be reminded that in the midst of this worry and cry for help, you are right there with us. And so we give you thanks for those moments where you have broken through the darkness, where you have calmed our thoughts, where you have had a person send a right email at the right time or or a phone call, or where we have seen each other over masks and recognized one another to say hello. Or where your still small voice has whispered in the midst of our doubt that you're there. And so, God, we give you thanks that we can cry out to help for for you, that your spirit groans and cries and weeps with us, and that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, walks with us. So we pray all this through the power of the Spirit. 
And we pray that prayer Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Family, as we would normally take up our offering at this time, we are reminded that our offerings and gifts are not just financial, but are also our entire lives. And so I ask that as you think about the ways you can use all that God has given you, you join us in our using these words to offer ourselves to God. When we face an unknown future that we can't imagine yet, when the closeness we have treasured turns from blessing into threat, as we miss our friends and loved ones, we crave community. May we look, God, in this season for a whole new way to be. May we cherish those around us as we never have before. May we think much less of profit. May we learn what matters more. In this time of separation, when we miss the life we've known, may we hear your voice proclaiming, I am here, you're not alone. God, when illness comes to threaten, and when so much here goes wrong, may we know this thing for certain, that your love is sure and strong, you're beside us in our suffering, and when our times are surely tough, may we face an unknown future, but it's filled, Lord, with your love. Amen.
place out into the world to follow God, living in the light. And remember, the Lord's eyes are upon those who love God. The Lord is a powerful shield, a strong support, a shelter from the heat, a shade from the midday sun, a guard against stumbling and a help against falling, one who lifts up the spirit, one who gives light to the eyes and one who heals life and gives blessing. Go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May they be with you, watch over you, and keep you until we're all together again. Amen. Shalom.